Hey, welcome everyone. We're continuing our series on Dataverse security. Keep in mind, all these topics also apply for Dynamics 365 because that is built on top of Dataverse. Here's a quick reminder of our agenda. Today we're talking about where to get started and then we'll cover the rest of these topics in future videos. So what do I mean where, I, where do I start? There are kind of two things I wanna cover here. One is what do you do if you are starting a brand new implementation? What do you need to know? What do you need to think about? The next item is what do you do if you have been hired on to work with an existing system? What do you start looking at and where do you begin? So let's first, before we get to those, let's talk about a few definitions. So when I talk about security in a broad sense, we mean protecting your system and the data that resides within it, right? And a lot of what we're talking about today is going to be more specific to user security. So who can access which tables or columns or rows in Dataverse? And this is a combination of my security role, my business unit, my teams, and so many more things that we're going to talk about throughout this series. When we talk about a security role, we're going to have a whole video on that coming up. And that just describes the user's rights to individual tables and additionally miscellaneous privileges. And all of this is based off of the user's business unit. And then the business unit, which we're going to talk about a lot and have a video about later, is kind of the structure. How are users organized in the system? The important thing to know there, especially as we talk about getting started, is that you can never reparent the uh, topmost default business unit, right? So you can add other business units below it, you can move people around, but that root business unit cannot be deleted or reparented. So where do I get started? Let's talk about when you are joining into a system that's already been built. You want to figure out the current state. I think security is a great topic to be knowledgeable on, and it's a great topic to learn about and really bring value quickly. So this is something that we can look at some of the best practices that we're going to talk about in this series. And if you can find ways that those could be applied to an existing system, you can really bring value and show your worth really quickly. So when you want to figure out current state, I encourage you to use the old fashioned security role report. So this is available when you are looking at a list of users, you can click run report and pull up this security role report for just the users you're looking at or even a selected group of users. And this will show you what roles they have. You can also do this in the Power Platform Admin Center. You can go to your environment, select a particular role and then see all the users assigned to it. So that might be a way to quickly see if you have users assigned to system administrator or assigned to a role that they shouldn't be assigned to and you can clean them up right from there. I also think it's important for you to figure out your business unit structure, see if there's ways that can be improved or if it can be used to simplify some of the rest of your security model. And also, I want you to review your security roles for any dangerous permissions, which we're going to talk about later. But things like delete, um, bulk delete, maybe even sharing could be a dangerous permission, exporting stuff. Those are things that you want to look for and see, can I clean this up? Is this really needed? Is there a valid reason? And talk about that and figure out what needs to be done and how you can modify that. Or let's talk about if you're creating a brand new system, then a few things that you want to keep in mind. This is what um, I always try and think about when I'm creating a new system, right? You want to think about how you can keep it simple. And there are lots of ways you can do that. And we're going to talk about it throughout this series. But one thing I also want to encourage you to do is make sure that you do well, you don't have to align your security model with your organizational structure. We have an idea that we sometimes want to keep them the same, right? Make it easy. Um, or we see a tree in our organization structure. And so we try to make the same tree in Dynamics or Dataverse, but we don't need to do that. Instead, we need to think just about the security, not about where they live in the organizational hierarchy. 
Part of keeping it simple also is gonna include making sure that there's a good reason for all of your exceptions. We don't want to be making things unnecessarily complex. And just keep in mind that any security decisions are go- can potentially cause usability or performance issues. And that includes usability for the users, but also usability for you and others as administrators, right? You want to make sure that other people can take care of this system if you're not there or whatever, right? So just make sure that you are balancing all of these exceptions or requirements with real life and with the supportability and the usability and the other constraints. So where do I look for this? You want to go into your Power Platform Admin Center, and then you'll see on, after you select the environment, you'll see on the right-hand side, the you can get right to the security roles, teams, and users, or you can go into the settings and see all of that information there under users and permissions. And finally, a few more quick reminders while we're getting started here. Remember, your security is cumulative, so users are going to get the least restrictive combination of all of their roles. This means that if I have a user assigned kind of a standard profile, and then we assign them edit access on top of that, they're going to have the sum of both of those roles together, right? And so you do want to be careful if we're assigning a whole bunch of roles to one user, we need to be aware of the impact of that, and we need to make sure we understand what's going on. Also, sometimes we think that we can do security by obscurity, right? If the user doesn't see it, they won't do it. Unfortunately, People like to click around, so we want to make sure that we are not using that concept, right? Security by obscurity is not security. We need to make sure that if there's something people can't see, if there's something they shouldn't be able to edit, we can't just hide the buttons. We do need to make sure that we're actually enforcing that security so that they are doing the right thing. So that's all I have for you today for where do I get started. Come back for the next video and we're going to talk about security roles. So before then, like, subscribe, comment, let me know your questions or other things that we should be talking about in future videos. Thanks.